Hey y'all, coming to you from International Headquarters, Scotty DTV. But I was over at Nichols Paint and Fab's open house. And man, if you've not seen that place, you gotta check out the video. Very, very nice, most impressive. And uh, while I was there, this 1968 Charger was there, and it's also very, very nice. I think y'all are gonna like it. Let me get the camera turned around and we'll take a quick look at it. Danny, how are you, brother? Good. Yeah, man, now what a cool car you got. Thanks. That's iconic. What is that, 68? 68 Charger. Yeah, tell me a little bit about it. Well, it come out of Oklahoma, well, originally Texas, uh, set up on blocks for 30 years out in the field. Oh, man. Solid car. Wait a minute, wait, wait, it's a Mopar, so it's a Mopar. like if you drove it, it wouldn't be a solid car. How did it say solid? Yeah, well, no, I guess Oklahoma's dry. No salt. Oh, no they salt. They don't use salt. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, set out in 30 years and solid car, needed everything. It'll be seven years to restore it. Right. But, uh, it's all done now. It's beautiful, brother. It's fun to drive. Yeah, I know, and I know. Have you been a Mopar fan long? Yeah, I, I you know, I like the big three, but uh, you know, Mopar is probably my my favorite. So. And the Charger is what top on your list? Top, yeah, it's a, a dream car. Was well, it a '68 in particular, or just that body? '68 style? in particular. What is yeah. it about that '68? You really like, like the round tail lights and the interior, the open grille in the front. Yeah. And so. Tripped your trigger. That's the one you Oh, like. yeah. yeah. So, did you do all this work yourself? I did. I had the motor built, but I did all the body work, restored all the parts, um, did all the research, and looked for. took me forever to find all the parts. Sure. And I know I was talking to you earlier, I was telling you one big thing that impressed me about the car is I know Mopar fans, big Mopar fans, are all about the way it came from Mopar. And this car looks like that's obviously lots nicer, but it doesn't look like he took very many liberties to change anything. He made what a little bit bigger wheel on it? A little bit bigger wheel. I wanted it to look original. Right. You know, I got, you know, like the engine is, you know, it's uh, 650 horse and foot pounds of torque, uh, but I wanted to make it look original, everything look original. You know, it's got uh, full custom suspension on it so it drives like a modern car you know like is it take, still a unibody though it's still a unibody uh it braced it up with some right right you know bracing and stuff but you didn't in put it. like an aftermarket chassis on it no okay. you no know, it's still the uh, original i wanted to keep everything to where it could be brought back to factory stock did you, you know, original. do the same thing with brakes and all too yeah you know it's got uh six piston willwood brakes in the okay. front but you know i got the uh, 11 inch drums in the back to keep it somewhat right. original well, that is a sacrifice, I gotta say. I mean, if you're gonna spend this kind of money and this kind of time, yeah, I wouldn't have thought twice about ripping them drums out of the back and been like, you're gonna have to live with that. Yeah, we well, got e-brake and everything, so it's you know, all the factory cables and all that. So, you know, it is a four-speed, so you want to have an e-brake. You did all this in a like a big, expensive garage? Or? No, just a single. I really call it a two-car garage, but behind my house, you know. So yeah. I, it was it was challenging, but I I got it done. You know, I mean, I'm with what were some of your biggest challenges? Storage, you know, and having space to really, I guess, uh, lay things out rather than have to do it in a small space. But, you know, I, I made it work, got it so done. So it, it was, that was just the space you were working in. What kind of challenges did you come in finding these Mopar parts and getting them back straight and all that kind of stuff? Well, that was that was challenging, but I, I met a lot of people. You know, you meet a lot of guys, Mopar guys that, you know, you wouldn't otherwise met, but they, you know, they've collected parts over the years. Mopar guys are hoarders. Oh yeah. And uh, it's gonna so, be worth something someday. So I might need that. Talk to them. eBay was helpful. You know, I watch eBay all the time. You know, trying to find original parts and fasteners and everything else. Some, you know, some old scrap yards where well, uh, they call salvage yards. Right. You know, these guys are really knowledgeable and can get you exactly what you need. All the unique Mopar pieces, parts and pieces, and. So. And it should be mentioned too that when you talk about seven years, you were telling me it wasn't like you were just dreaming about building it. You, if you had work to do, you were working on it weekends, nights, everything. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh, there's no saying I'll get to it one one day. Right. You know, I'm trying to be dedicated, and uh, I had a goal. I wanted to meet that goal, and I made it happen. Right. So. And you've got a lot of really nice chrome on it, but you were telling me some of the trim is just polished stainless, and you filed and straightened all right. that stuff out yeah. yourself, too. Yeah, all the original stainless, trying to, you know, uh, spend a tremendous amount of time just trying to straighten it. It's real, it's real thin, right. but it's real hard, you know, right. to kind of sand and polish out. It took a while, but 
you know, it, it was a new experience for me too. Yeah. But well, I was going to say, surely you've got years and years of experience to turn one out like this. Well, not, not really. When I got out of high school, I worked in a body shop for a couple of years, couple, you know, two body shops, and I kind of started my own little shop there for when I was about 20. But then, you know, I didn't want to get burnt out, so I, different career, but, you know, I got that experience early at a young age, and, you know, so I'm able to do it. Right. And uh, other things, just learn a lot as you go, and there's YouTube's helpful, you know, you can always find stuff. Eh, you got to be talk mechanically to inclined, though, too. Uh, yeah, I think so. That you, comes yeah, naturally I mean, to you. You're not afraid to try something right, when it yeah. comes to using your hands and machines mm -hmm. and that stuff. And when people explain to you this is how it needs to be, you can decipher that and be, okay, I got what that is. Right. So you've got some God-given abilities, but you didn't spend sure. a lot of time honing them. You do, like, heating and air or something, right? Right, yeah. right. You have a real job. Yes, correct. And, uh, yeah, you just... Like I said, I, I don't know, like I said, God-given abilities, but, um, you know, not, not afraid to try new things right. and uh, try to get it done and, and you know, it's make mistakes, but yeah, but uh, you learn from it. Sure, and, and you didn't get flustered and you didn't quit because you were also telling me, too, that it was one of those things like you didn't have any distractions because this had been a dream of yours for a long time, so all you wanted to really do was get this charger done and work on it and get through the end so you could start driving it. Right. Yeah, and you know when it's in the garage, you know if you get frustrated with something, you can walk away. You could focus on something else. You don't have to. It's it's not like you're, you know, on a time schedule, time limit right there. So you can, you know, step back and think about it. No no reason for it to be stress stressful. Right. So, and uh, there's a reward on the other side for you right. once you figure it out. It's yep. like it was worth any stress that was mm -hmm. in it. And I, you may have told me, but what engines in it? It's a, four, a stroke 440. 493 cubic inches, all roller, um, solid roller cam. Uh, a lot of work you know, trying to make it just really reliable and, and tough. Right. So, Did you keep the original parts or did they come with the car, or the engine and all? Original engine was gone and there was no hood on it. It was set out in the field for 30 years with no hood on it. So, uh, you know, everything under the hood was trashed. Right. So I had to, you know, yeah, a lot of those, a lot of parts, you know, I had to source and uh, did a lot of research you know I mean when you're building your first Mopar right. a lot of research and questions and had you built any other cars before this one yeah I had a, a Corvette when I you know I got it when I was 18 and I you know did that one and I sold that to pay for this well brother I would say that when you retire or if you don't want to do heat and air anymore there's a job for you in this industry because man for a guy that did it in his garage over seven years you knocked this one out of the park you know, I, I would enjoy it, but, uh, yeah, I said I don't want to get burned out, but I don't think I would. Yeah. But. Well, the money's probably better than that heat and air anyhow. That's, yeah, that's the thing. Well, but, dude, if you do anything else, you let me know, because like I said, man, for, for a guy doing it in his garage, nobody could have done any better than that. Well, thank you. No, man, I appreciate your time, brother. No problem. Thank you. So there you go from the Nichols Paint and Fab open house, a very nice 1968 Dodge Charger. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.